Hi, my name is Sean, and I'm just going to quickly show you actually the second edition rules for Sonic the Hedgehog Crash Course. I recommend you play with these rules going forward if you already know the rules. I'll, uh, I'll provide a link to the point where the new rule is stated uh, in case you already know the rules to the game. But I'm going to show the whole game and how you play featuring these new second edition rules. So, what I'm going to start with is setup. So, as you see, I kind of have it all set up already. What you'll do is you'll take uh, all these tiles, separate them up. So you have the track tiles featuring uh, corners and straightaways, different obstacles. You'll take the two tiles with stars on them, place them so the star pieces are touching. That's all these really mean. It's just that this is how you start setup. You'll take all the players that are playing, set them off on this side of these two tiles, just off the track, and take the remaining two piles and just randomly separate them into two different piles here. Let's uh, place these double-sided shortcut tiles just off to one side. Of course, the reference tile. And then uh, you'll give each player playing whatever character they wish to be. So we have Knuckles, Eggman, Tails, Sonic. They each have an ability. I'll let you discover that on your own. And as well, uh, two of these damage tokens each. Place these uh, one our extra life tokens off to the side. The players don't get these yet. These are earned. And then we have the Flicky Birds, which are just off to one side here doesn't matter. They don't need to be organized in any way. Just make a general pile. So what you'll do is I'll start with what you do on your turn. So there's only two things you really do on your turn uh, that cost uh, three actions. So you can spend th uh, three actions on your turn and you can either fix damage or move. In order to move, you have to fix any damage you have first. So when you take damage by any means, you have these little tokens. You just place it on there. Let's say like that. Tails would have one damage. So before they can move, they'd have to spend one of their three actions to do that, and then you'd have two actions to move. How you move is, when you start the game, you can just move on to any one of these pieces, but once you're on, you can only move to any adjacent tile. You can't move sideways or backwards, just forward or diagonal. So, uh, that's how you move. Uh, we have obstacles on the track that you might uh, face. So you'll see here we have the spikes and the buzz bomber. Regardless of, of this, no matter which one you move into, you would take one damage and place it on your character. What happens is you can actually get pushed into these, or you might move into them by accident. Uh, when you get pushed, let's say Sonic here pushes Tails. If he moves into the space Tails is in, Tails gets pushed one space forward. If Sonic came in diagonally, doesn't matter. Tails still moves forward one space, so you can push players. So, uh, what you'll notice that the track is only two spaces right now, and you might be like, that's a short race. What you actually do is you add track to the, uh, add tiles to the track as you're playing mid-game. So when a player moves off, they get to choose from one of these two exposed top tiles here on these two uh, things, and they can orient it however they wish, and then they continue. Once you do that, whenever you place a new tile, you take a flicky bird, which is basically a victory point, add it to your tile, and that just represents uh, a point. What you're trying to do is get a certain amount of points, and then the very last tile in play will be your finish line. I'll explain more of that uh, closer to the end of this. So that's how you add to the, the uh, track. So whenever you move off of it, you'll add a new tile from either or, orient it however you wish. So that would continue like so. And it's only when you're able to move off onto it. Uh, there's shortcuts, so if you're ever a player and you notice there's an arrow here, an arrow here, kind of an empty space, a gap players can move through. If, there, if the track is made already, you can place, if you're able to immediately take the shortcut, you can place a tile like this, and you can go like that for one action. So this would just be one movement. Regardless of how long the shortcut is, that's still one movement. So you could do something like this. Let's say he's Dr. Robotnik's right here. You can place a loop and then a tunnel. That's still one action. You can use as many tiles as is currently available. Additionally, one other way to make a shortcut, which I'll just show quickly here, they could simply be two adjacent pieces. So let's say Dr. Robotnik's here, you could go like this and it'd be one. That would be one action as well. So it's uh, different ways to, to create shortcuts in the game to get ahead. So 
That's how you add track. That's what the track does. That's kind of the strategy behind it. Uh, now we'll talk about items. So I recommend, the game doesn't come with this, but I recommend a little drawstring bag to draw items out of. So whenever you uh, cross a tile, regardless of uh, how you cross it, whenever you go from one tile to another, as you can see, they're two separate tiles, you draw an item from this bag. It could be like the shortcut we mentioned earlier. So if it was like that, and you went from here to here, that counts as crossing into another tile. <coughs> Anytime you cross into another tile, you'll draw an item from the bag. And how you draw is based on your placement. If you're first, you draw one item. If you're last, you draw three items, and then choose the one you want. And if you're anywhere in between first and last, you draw two items and choose one. Uh, the different items, which I'll briefly show, if you can come closer here. Grabbed a bunch of them, but uh, here's the different items. You'll notice some have a green background, some have an orange background. Orange background items are just used and then tossed. They're immediately used. They don't go on the track. Green items do go on the track when you use them. So, for example, let's just throw some people up on the track here. Whenever you use uh, an item, you can place it in any free space. So that means no player is in it or another item. And you can place it like this, the spring item. When you land on it, you can jump over any amount of obstacles that are in succession of one another and land in the first available space. Uh, so if it was here, there's no item immediately in front of it, nothing happens. It has to be right in front, of, oops, directly in front of the obstacle. Knuckles is gone forever. Okay, however, you'll notice the buzz bombers, you can't jump over buzz bombers. So if Tails jumps on here, he'll jump over the spikes, but he'll stop on the Buzz Bomber and take damage. So the Buzz Bombers can't be jumped over. That's the one obstacle that uh, you can't jump over. Crab meat. Crab meat are basically an obstacle you can add to the track. These, uh, all these items, by the way, are permanent features. They stay on the track uh, continually until the remainder of the game. All players can use them. So when you add crab meat, uh, you can place it anywhere, block a player, so he's like, oh shoot, i got to go into there and I'll take damage. By the way, anytime you take damage on your turn, that's immediately the end of your turn. Uh, crab meat are also something that you can jump over with a spring. Boosters. Place a booster on there, you'll move two spaces forward. So if you land on one, you immediately go one, two for free. It doesn't cost any actions, just the action to move on to the booster, of course. And you can combo these, of course, so you could have it go like this and go one, two, one, two. And uh, of course, t knuckle or uh, tails wouldn't be able to control that. He'd have to move into the spikes in that situation, which you'd take damage. So the point of the game is you're trying to kind of combo items together, like this, to get uh, way ahead. So you can go like this, jump, and basically any item you run into takes precedence over the one you ran into previously. I'll cover rings last. So these are the three items you just use, and then uh, they immediately are discarded. Moto bug, any, so let's say uh, Dr. Robotnik here has the motor bug, he uses it. Any character in the same lane as him, ahead of him, takes damage. So Sonic would take damage, Tails would take damage. This is the bumper item. Use this on any one player and they'll jump back two spaces. So if I was uh, in a situation like this and I used it on Sonic, Sonic would be forced to go back two spaces, skipping anything in the space behind him. So he would jump over players, etc. Um, bomb item, bomb item, you choose any one tile. So let's say Tails has the bomb item, he's using it, and he chooses this tile. Everyone on that tile takes one damage. So it'll be Sonic, Dr. Eggman, take damage. And of course, any items in that tile are discarded and are out of the game. And then lastly, rings. So rings, when you draw items, uh, no matter what, if you get a ring, you take the ring. So normally you only get to choose one item. Uh, when you ever you draw, even though you can choose, or if you, even if you draw three, you can still only choose one. But if you get a ring, you get to take it and choose an item. Uh, if you get four rings, you'll get one of these extra lives. If you take damage, of course, your rings get dropped onto the track. You can read about that in the rules, but it's uh, pretty straightforward. But when you grab four rings, you get to have an extra life. What this will allow you to do is negate one damage that you take on your turn, or during someone else's turn, you can negate one of your damage. Or you can discard it and flip the last tile in play. So in the case of, of a situation like this, let's say Tails has it, he decides to discard his extra life, 
spin the track, suddenly he's in first now. You just reorient them, and now Sonic's behind. So, uh, that's basically uh, the game. Let's see if I cover. Oh, you can only hold a max of two items. Uh, and I think I've covered everything. So basically, the new rule, I'm just going to go over it once more, just to, just to cover it. You don't draw items whenever you want on your turn for an action. That was the old rule. Now, every time you move from one tile into another tile, regardless of how you do it, uh, you draw an item now. So items are constantly coming in and you can use all three of your items or actions now to fix damage or move. So that's the new rule. Uh, any rules I might have missed, just check the rule book. Now that you have a basic idea, it'll help you kind of scan through the rule book a lot quicker. And that's basically how you play Sonic Crash Course 2nd Edition.